I like to take this time to always thank the viewers. I'm very well aware that you guys have options, but you are here listening to my mess. So thank you so much. Okay, guys, so for part two, what we are going to do here, we're going to focus on, actually, we're going to focus on multiple things. But I'm going to break it down for you in digestible bits. I'm not going to go through the entire time Daryl Brooks spoke, because we know when he picked up that mic, we all went to sleep. He wouldn't shut up. He would not shut up. <laughs> right? I mean, Daryl Brooks sucked the energy out of us talking about nonsense. But look, no, I'm not going to do that to you. Okay? We're, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to digest that into bit, beats and pieces that can make sense to us. And at least that's going to fit into what I'm trying to tell you. But um, I want to dive into the statements from his mother his grandmother. I want to dive into his own statements. I want to dive into what he said when he said it. I want to dive into that stupid mask of his. I want to dive into uh, his emotional reactions. And I'm going to point out as to why that reaction is happening at that moment. And you're going to be shocked. Well, maybe you won't. Yeah, we'll see. And then I'm going to point out to you what happened at the end. Okay. And then we're going to finish all this with the sentencing with the judge laying the hammer. I don't have a hammer. I need a hammer in here. Laying the gavel down like, and sending him to jail. Listen to me. Listen to me. This is from my point of view, okay? So get your sue sticks out of here. <laughs> Mind me, was the, was she interrupted at all based on anything that went on yesterday? Was that either the court taking a break? Yes. It was related to, uh, or Mr. Brooks' removal from the courtroom, yes. All right. Any comment or position on the request that she be able to restate her victim impact statement prior to the people we have on Zoom for you making their statements, sir? Um, I don't recall uh, that particular victim um, being interrupted because of the issue with me being uh, sent to the other courtroom. Um, I think it may have been a break that may have cut uh, that particular victim off from the statement. Whatever the circumstances were, I have a request from a victim to give a statement. I'm going to honor that request um, and allow her to make that statement before I turn things over to you and the people who are on Zoom on your behalf, okay? I wanted to start with this part first because that was significant to me. And also inspiration, no, I'll tell you why. This little girl, she had the opportunity not to come back on day two. You know, because she was supposed... it was a, It's a victim statement. That was on day one. She could have easily not come back. But she said, you know what? I'm going to go in front of this monster. And I'm going to tell him what I think. Good job. Good job, child. Good job. Good job. You don't cower in front of jerks. Good job. Persevere. Push through. That was a highlight of day two. It was a highlight because this was not a grown up. This was not, I don't know what else to say. This was a child with enough conviction to say, I'm going to look at my, uh, at, at the accuser and tell him what I think. Oh, Daryl, bested by a child. Also, that was his face when that little girl was talking the entire time. Glazed, glass eyes, disconnected not paying attention disconnected this daryl 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 hi daryl is this why you're trying to make us believe that you're a nice person hi okay okay daryl little girl i know you don't know me and i certainly don't know you and i probably would never okay but if one day you ever watch this video, I want you to know that that was inspirational, okay? Inspirational. Is this your mom? Yes. All right, so I can see Don Woods on the Zoom. Miss Woods, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am, I can hear you. All right, thank you. I know you have your... 
he took off his mask. Let me tell you something. First, can we can we acknowledge Judge has some good ass hair? Oh, Judge, some nice hair. Listen, listen. Daribu sticking off his mask is significant. Significant. So yesterday I was looking at uh, scouring the YouTube to see who else has talked about the mask. And from my knowledge, and that wasn't, I didn't look that long and that hard, but I think I'm the only one who talked about this damn stupid mask of his, that he uses it as a crush to hide a lot of, a lot of his emotions. A lot of his macro-aggressive emotions, okay? i give you an example, right? Let me tell you why the mouth is so... Imp the mouth, the cheeks, the nose is so important when you're trying to decipher someone's mental state or current state of mind, right? When you're happy, you smile. When you're sad, you go... <laughs> and when you're angry, you go... <clears throat> right? All of that is acting. It's not just the eyeballs. Do you understand? This effort knows exactly that point. You know, he does, he does. He wears it as a blanket to feel secure and to allow him to act out whatever emotions he wants to act out. And he takes it out whenever he wants you to see when he's about to put put a show of sadness and careness and, oh, I'm so, um, what's the word? I'm so, uh, compassionate. I'm so compassionate. Let me tell you something. If someone was COVID conscious, I know plenty of people who were COVID conscious, okay? <laughs> they will not take their mask, okay? Their mask will be on their face from the time they leave that, their house to the time they go home. I don't care who you are, they will not remove that mask for nobody, no one, okay? This is not a COVID conscious person. And then what else would you request a mask? This is a, this is a, this is a COVID mask. Like, since when do we give surgery, surgical mask in court? Unless you use the excuse of COVID scare. He thinks, he thinks we're stunads. He thinks we're stunads. By the way, this is one way I avoid, uh, try to avoid the, the YouTube, um, the YouTube, uh, ever watching eye. By using um, different vocabulary words for insults. <laughs> it seems to work. Stunads. Okay. <laughs> now, why did he take off his mask? Again, he's about to put on a show. His mom, it's not out of respect for his mom. Some people were saying, oh, he respects his mom. He wants to show his face to his mom. No, no. He doesn't respect his mom. Please. His mom is, it doesn't affect his mom. No, it's, he wants us to see that he's about to be emotional. He, let's look. Yes, thank you. Good afternoon. Um, I have two things I would like to tell. One is a written statement, Your Honor. And then I have a poem I would like to read after my statement, if that's permittable. Okay, thank you, thank you. <laughs> By the way, Judge, that was shady. You know, you know, they all heard her, right? Nobody answered. Can I read? Can I read the, the statement and the poem? No, what crickets? Okay, thank you. Oh, Judge, Judge with the good hair, shady. Mental illness affects everyone. It destroys lives, families, and hurts society. For far too long, it's been a dirty little secret in families that no one wants to talk about. Mental illness is the elephant in the room that so many pretend it's not there. People who suffer from it are often shunned by families and friends, rejected by society and made fun of the subject of bad jokes, So yesterday I talked about how I have a bone to pick with Don Woods and this lady who commented, which I didn't respond. I don't, I'm not fighting with any of you. I'm not fighting. I'm not, honestly, I'm not, a, I'm civilized. I'm not a fighter. I am civilized. I'm 37 years old. I'm beyond that fighting. No, I don't fight. <laughs> That's beyond me. Mm -mm. Ridiculed and judge on YouTube, podcast, Facebook, and other media posts. 
used in campaign ads, disrespected, stripped of their dignity. No one cares. No one sees their pain or hears their cries and pleas for help. They are the forgotten ones and viewed by many of not having a place in a society. It is no fault of their own that they have become ill and began to change from the person we all knew. Once viewed as fun, loving, and kind, are now the outcasts of society. We say they're what's wrong with society. They're idiots, unfit. They don't, they need to be disposed of, thrown out with the rest of the trash. They serve no purpose. The same my brother's keeper doesn't apply to them. And the Bible in the book of Philippians chapter two, verse four, it says that each of you not look only to his own interests, but also the interests of others. Mental illness caused them to do the unthinkable. They must be punished. Yes, I agree there should be some accountability to their for their actions. But some? we also must render help. What good is punishment without correction to prevent the act from help happening again? And in their cases, or many of their cases, Treatment, therapy, medication, hospitals and institutions that specialize in helping those who suffer with Ill mental illness need to be offered. And I believe these places can help those who suffer become mentally well. I believe lawmakers and society as a whole need to recognize mental illness. Mental illness cannot be eradicated with prison virus. Mental illness is going to always be there. It's invasive. With treatment and therapy, medication, and hospitals and institutions that specialize in the treatment of mental illness, it can be controlled. What else can we do as a society to help a society? Those who suffer from mental illness? How about showing a little compassion, empathy, compassion. and some understanding? understanding? Families need to advocate for those who cannot speak for themselves or who struggle to understand what's happening to them. Lawmakers should support by providing resources to individuals so they can get the help they need. Now, I've been dealing with mental illness for over 30 some odd years. And here's my take on it. And I think I have a little insight on it. Uh, from the surface, I believe that in, treatments need to be offered. I believe that if treatment is offered early when the signs of mental illness first shows and it's, it's addressed and stayed on top of and still let people lagger and fall through the cracks, just maybe there would be less court cases and less people crying because their loved ones was hurt or was injured or killed because someone of mental illness attacked them. Maybe that needs to be done. Treatment needs to be done early and right away and stayed up on and not let people fall through the crack holes and not be shunned out the door. It's the same. You don't have a mental illness. You're just a bad person and needs to be locked up. Jail is not the only answer. Help, treatment, hospitalization, and medication 
it plays a big role in preventing this where we are today if it would have been offered sooner. Now, I have a poem that I have adopted, not just... I'm not going through the poem, okay? It's this Maya Angelou cage bird stupidity that she's trying to convey that Daryl Brooks is a cage bird. That was, your son is a murderer. Do you understand? He is your spawn. Do you understand? Let me tell you something. The reason why that, her statement bothers me a lot there isn't because <laughs> calm down Alistair calm down listen to me I have okay I'm going to gather my thoughts okay she says that people with mental illness are shunned by society discarded nobody cares about them lawmakers and governors are supposed to put awareness around mental illness what is that that is so far from the truth look i understand in america how uh, mental mental wellness services are not as great as in Europe or even Canada. I get it. But if you don't know, now you know, even here in the US, you have resources to ask for help if you're going through any moment. I'll tell you what. 911? Okay, okay, fine, fine. You want to skip the police? Fine, okay? Call your doctor. Oh, you don't have a doctor? It's okay. You know what you do, okay? You call the, the, the self uh, hotline. Okay, I know, I know that's not where you are, but you know what? That's a way to reach out. They would direct you somewhere. You don't need to have the exact number or where to go. Do you understand? Okay, fine, you don't have that? Call your local hospital, any of them. They will not turn you away. Do you understand? So her idea that there's no services at all in the United States is bogus. Bogus. That's one. Number two, the reason why she irks the head out of me, she knows very darn well what 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 Daryl Brooks did, and why why it hit a chord in my heart. It's because one of my family members, one of my family members, um, uh, um, has severe mental situations. Okay, she's not discarded. She's not unloved. And society does not, she's not rejected. Do you understand, downwards? Everything you just said there just didn't apply. I'm not saying it doesn't apply to me, but, but, but I have been around plenty, plenty of people with mental illness and society does not want to discard them. She's lying. She's lying to you. She's lying to you. Okay. And again, the idea that because he had mental illness that he committed the crime, I've been around people who are psychopath. Okay. Psychopath to, to a level where, where it's, it, it's uncomfortable to be around. They've, even they have, haven't killed anyone. This woman has no idea what the hell she's talking about. She has no idea. She has no idea. And the reason why she has no idea, because everything she's just saying is full of lies. Cage birds say. Cage birds say. Your son is not a bird. Your son is not in a cage. He needs to be in a cage. Forget the bird. What's worse than a bird? Because birds are pretty. Ugh. Caged. Caged turd. Has that. Has that. That was really annoying. Everything, everything she said there, false. Society, false. Lawmakers are very well aware of mental illness, okay? Plenty of stuff have been passed here in the US that targets helping mental illness, okay? And to the lady who sent me that comment that she, she agrees with Don Woods because, because she, and she put it in caps. 
Don was the mother. She did the best she can for her child. Blah, 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 blah. Let me tell you something. And she's like, and then she says, you're the person I hate the most right now. Like she hates me the most in my life. Let me tell you something, lady. Okay. If I'm the person you hate the most in your life, you got problems. Problems. Okay. Problems. You need to get checked. Problems. Because if I affected your life that much, for speaking my opinion, you're unstable. <laughs> okay. Okay. And secondly, 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 there are plenty of resources out there in the US that can get you started. It's not perfect. It's not perfect. Yes, it's expensive. I mean, what do you want me to tell you? Move to Europe, right? Like you got to do the best you can with what you have. But you can't say that there's nothing. You can't say that because there is something. And I should have said this earlier. Um, I have three monitors in front of me and the monitor that I'm pointing at right now is the monitor that the Zoom shows up. So that's why I look like yes, I'm turned away, but I'm actually watching you. Thank you, ma'am. All right, thank you. Um, thank you. Then I'll turn next to uh, Mary Edwards. If you want to turn your camera on and unmute, and then Ms. Woods, if you yes, would. ma'am. You want to take her camera. Good afternoon. And I should say for the record that. Look, look what he's trying to sell you. Are you buying? I'm so, I'm so sad. Are you buying this crap? <laughs> What's the warranty? <laughs> Uh, what's the return policy? <laughs> Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. This fool, this fool thinks we are fools. This guy really thinks that we are sillies. Okay. Are you buying this? This is this is supposed to be sad, Daryl. That's why he took off his mask. Okay, to show us that he is remorseful and sad. No, he's not. No, he's not. Because throughout the rest of this segment, because he's not going to put on the mask ever again. I want you to pay attention as we go along to his true intentions, to how how he is in his face. He's not a, he's not a nice man. And you're going to see his, his mouth. You're going to see a lot of... Okay? There's nothing remotely nice about this man all right this is him trying to fool you and sell you a, a, a bag of, of marbles are you buying i'm not buying anyway let's press play thank you judge for the record uh, my name is dr mary darlene edwards and i am not the wicked grandmother of the west i am the grandmother of daryl edward Brooks Jr. And I asked uh, to be here today for two reasons. First of all, from the bottom of my heart, I want to offer my sincere apologies to those who have been hurt so badly by what has happened here, this um, tragedy that has been caused by my grandson. Okay. Hey, Don Woods. Let me tell you how you make a letter. Let me tell you how you make a speech. Let me tell you how you at least bamboozle us to believe anything you have to say. You start off with the right thing, is you apologize to the victim first before you tell us your, your venom, okay? At least Mary on the Wall was decent enough to, to apologize to the victims on behalf of her grandson. Now, I didn't know that, but the comments told me that this is not his real grandmother. This is not even Don Wood's mother. <laughs> She's not biologically related to any of them, okay? So you might ask yourself, who the hell is this Mary on the Wall? Well, Mary on the Wall, I believe he's just a pastor that was that was nice enough to take in the strays, Don Woods and her son. Oh, be nice, Alistair. Okay, I'll be nicer. Sorry, Don Woods. 
Sorry, Daryl. Anyway, so no, uh, Mary on the wall is talking. I want to also apologize to the family of the little boy. I understand their name is Sparks. And to all of those whose lives have been damaged by this overwhelming tragedy. I want you to look how Daryl Brooks' face changes. Let me tell you something. This is not a concerned face. This is not a face of like paying attention. He's not happy. He's not happy that the grandmother is apologizing on his behalf because that statement means that she co-signs with the rest of us that Daryl Brooks is responsible for, for this tragedy. He is not happy with that. And so, Mary on the wall, you have problems. <laughs> you have to deal with your grandson later on because he's not happy with what she just said. What happened to the poor little boy that smiles at his grandmother? Oh, darling. Hi. As a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, I want to give the family and those who have been hurt so badly the scripture. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, uh, I don't know how to say this without being offensive. I just feel like if I was a victim, the last thing I want to hear is about scripture. If I was a victim, your apology just made me listen. That scripture, I was like, oh God, oh God. Oh God, wait, oh God. Oh God. <laughs> because that's not what I need. That's not what I need. How, what does a speech like that supposed to go, you might ask yourself? Um, ask me. <laughs> no, you didn't, but I'll tell you anyway. <laughs> I'll tell you, Mary on the Wall. <laughs> I tell you, you first apologize to the victim like nobody's business, okay? I need like a good five paragraphs of apology. The second is you have to divert the blame onto your grandson. That's how I would done. I would apologize and I would be like, Daryl, how dare you? You're terrible. You have to divert that blame there. And then you, your conclusion should be forgiveness. Ha like allow me the room to forgive them. That's how an apology to a victim should be. Okay? If you guys don't know, <laughs> how do I know that? No, if you guys don't know, I'm telling you, that's how an apology to a victim in the court of law should be. If you want to have any credibility points with anyone, whether it's the legal, <laughs> the legal perspective, the personal perspective, that's how an apology should be. You should never, never have an ounce of selfness in an apology it makes it completely mute and no ounce of righteousness i don't want to hear scriptures that's not what i want to hear you know people downplay the level of pain these families go through the last thing i want to hear is from anybody that is from your family daryl brooks so if i'm going to sit there and hear from them i need them to lap the floor i'm serious i'm serious i'm serious mary on the wall you started very good and now you're going sideways <sighs> You know what I mean? Apology to a victim should be uh, sorry to the victim. You should scold the person who did the crime and then you should give a room and allow the victim to forgive the person you scolded and then end it there. That's healing. Oh. All right. Let's listen to the scripture. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. And I say this, please know that it's my prayer that my grandson will sincerely and humbly apologize and ask all of you and God for forgiveness that for this horrible, terrible deed. Some of you have said that you will never forgive him. Please do not be like the man who drank the poison and hoped his enemy would die. Unforgiveness is a terrible disease. Before I close, I just want to share with you some facts with regard to mental illness. And I got this from uh, the government's uh, mental health website. There's a myth that said mental health problems don't affect me. Many people don't feel like it affects them. That's a myth. 
It affects everyone. It's a common problem. In 2020, and listen to this, one in five American adults experience a mental health issue. One in six young people experience a major depression episode. One in 20 Americans lived with a serious mental illness, such as schizophrenia, bipolar disease, or major depression. Suicide is a leading cause of death in the United States. In fact, it was the second leading cause of death for people ages 10 to 24. It accounted for the loss of more than 45,979 Americans in 2020. That's nearly double the number of lives lost to homicide. As a result of this great tragedy, I'm dedicated to leading the next, living the next chapter of my life with a mental health awareness campaign. I have faith to believe that God will hear the voices of all of those impacted by this horrible disease, as well as the cries of the mentally ill. I thank you for this opportunity to share with you from the bottom of my heart, and my prayers will continue on for those who have been affected. God bless you all. Thank you, Ms. Edwards. Okay. So... The reason why I let that play out, as you can tell, I was bored. Because I, I wanted people to see that she read those things from the government website. Hey, Don Woods, remember how you said the government doesn't care? Don Woods, Don Woods, this is from the government website. Okay? Another key point that I want to point out from her speech, the grandmother. Keep in mind, she's not related to Daryl Brooks. Okay? She's not related to Don Woods. All right. She's just a person that thinks she knows that family because apparently she says uh, Daryl has been bipolar since the age of 12. Let me tell you something. I'm going to spoil alert you. That's false. That was debunked. The judge will debunk that. OK, I have to spoil that. That is false information. Who fed her that information? This information came out from Don Wu's initial letter to the victim. Remember? So that bipolar age of 12, I, I remember that from that statement that Don Woods gave to the press addressed to the victims that Daryl Brooks was diagnosed with bipolar with mental illness since the age of 12. That's what she said. She didn't say bipolar. She said mental illness since the age of 12. Girl, Don Woods... You fed that story to your poor grandmother. Now look at us sitting here and s talking about Mary on the wall. Look what you did to Mary on the wall, okay? Because Mary on the wall, she just, she just, she believes Don Woods because she's also bamboozled by these two criminals, allegedly. And um, now she talked about this, about Mary on the wall. Mary on the wall talks about like this horrible disease and how she's going to fight for it. It's understandable. She she likes Daryl Brooks and she sees him as his grand his grandson, and so yeah, my grandkid it's it's he's been sick so yeah I'm gonna spend the rest of my life to help him out. I commend you, Mary. I commend you, Mary. But these two lie to you, okay? They lie to you. They used you as a mouthpiece. And didn't you feel like you were at a weird seminar? Like, it was a weird seminar, wasn't it? It was a seminar for mental illness. <laughs> All right, Mr. Brooks, we do not have anyone else. You see his face? He's a little bit like, what? What? There's no one else? He expects somebody else to come and speak. Let me tell you something. You're about to see Daryl Brooks' true emotional break down okay his mom didn't do it his grandma didn't do it why does it happen now let's look oh we have michelle allworth yes, sorry about that michelle. thank you thank you all right if ms allworth then would start her camera and unmute and we'll hear see how relief you got oh she's here Rel relief 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 relieved relieved which i don't understand it doesn't change anything why are you so relieved that she just showed up i know why 
from her next. Thank you, Madam Clerk. And you are. Hi, my name is Michelle. Look how much happier he is. Full gesture, a kiss. He doesn't do that for his own mom. This is this is to a per not even for his own grandmother. No, 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 no. This person who's about to speak has Daryl Brooks' soft spot. That's why he was relieved. It's someone that he actually cares for. That's why he was relieved. It's someone he actually cares for. This is someone Daryl Brooks likes. Not, not sexually, but like he likes that person. Oh, Erica Patterson. <laughs> Girl, don't worry. You don't want him. Uh -oh, word. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Go ahead. I'm kind please. of sick. My son, my son is here in the room with me. He's sick at from home to school. That's okay. Go my ahead. My name is Michelle. My name is Michelle Allworth. I met Daryl Brooks Jr. 17 years ago when we both lived in Sparks, Nevada. He became my best friend, and over time, we became brother and sister to each other. We shared so many good times, whether it was hanging out at the house, listening to music, movies, or just having conversations, a good laugh. He always had a smile on his face and the best laughs and jokes. Going out to theaters and a movie, going out to eat, attending Hot August Nights, which is a car show in Reno, Nevada, the rib cook-off. He shared with me multiple times on a daily basis since this, since this has happened last year, how remorseful he truly is, sorry. Um, he is a very private person when it comes to his feelings and emotions, and it only happens with family and close friends. They say blood is thicker than water. Well, you can choose to make your own family. Private person? No, girl. He fed you a story. I don't, I don't blame her for believing it private person only opens up to family and friends Daryl I've chosen to make Daryl part of my family I will always have his back even with his tragic event um, I suffer from um, medical issues as well I have epilepsy and cerebral palsy my whole life I've had it my whole life Daryl was there several times look at Daryl's emotion He is crumbling in front of us. He is emotional. This person, this lady, Michelle Allworth, means something to him. Several times that I had seizures. He called 911, went to the ER with me, stayed with me by my side when I went home, um, and helped in any way that he could help me. Um, sorry. Because of this reason and him being a family friend to me, he lived with me back in 2006 and again in two, either 2013 or 14. I'm glad he lived with me at those times because I black out during a seizure and unable to call 911. He lived with me for over a year. I wouldn't have let him had I not trusted him with my life. He had never shown any signs being this way on what happened November 21st, 2021. This is not the Daryl I know. He is a loving, compassionate, loyal, and humble, per humble person. He would give a complete stranger that needed it the shirt off his back, the last dollar in his po pocket, or a place to stay. During this manic episode, he had blacked out the whole incident. I have prayed a lot since 2016 because of my medical issues and almost lost my life to a seizure and even more now since this has all happened. I know what happened with those lives being lost and people being injured is terrible. It's something Daryl will have to live with the rest for the rest of his life and always carry that with him knowing this happened. I hope that I hope that he gets the help he needs for his mental illness. My hope as well is that he gets help in a mental facility and that's it. Thank you very much for your time, everyone. Thank you. All right, at this time, Madam Clerk, has anyone else joined the Zoom? No. All right, then at this time, the court will close the Zoom. The proceedings are...
being live streamed and family and friends can watch that way as well. Okay, let's break that part down. At the end of her speech, she says, it's my hope that he gets sent to a mental facility. Okay, this is the same story that was perpetrated by Don Woods, by the grandmother, and now her. We've heard from three people consecutively who said that Daryl needs to be in a mental facility in some sort, or in other words, needs to be anywhere else but in jail, okay? That brings us back as to why he was nervous, why he was nervous that she might not be up, because it's, it's, it, would be, it would be interfering with his storyline, okay? Daryl is preparing the groundworks to make a case against, I mean, to the judge, as to why he needs to be sent to a mental facility, okay? And in that, those three people, in that order, were the order is not is not uh, by hazard the order is not random okay all right let's go back she she said manic manic episode girl she doesn't she doesn't know that do you really think Daryl Brooks have met this girl and said hey uh, Michelle you know I have like bipolar disorder she doesn't know she doesn't know this is conversations this is based on conversations that Don Woods, Edward, maybe, uh, Edward, uh, Don Woods and, and uh, Daryl Brooks probably had with her, like, I'm manic. You got to say I'm manic. I need to go to a mental facility. Do you understand? This is conversation. This is glimpse. To me, it tells me that someone has spoken to that girl and told her what they want to be said. And therefore, please mention that. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay. Now, let's go back to... When she said Daryl stay with her, 2006 and 2014. Girl, Daryl fed you lies. He, uh, yeah, he was nice to you. And like, call 911 when you're having seizures and all that stuff. Yes, of course. Of course, of course. It's not because he liked you. Not because he enjoyed you. Because he was homeless. Daryl was homeless. Daryl is a bum, Okay. You can double check that that guy never had a job, never held a job, in and out of jail, and homeless. He needed a place to stay. Now, if you need a place to stay, you can't come into someone's house and act a fool. You got to be nice and all. Do you know what I'm saying? Girl, he fed you lies because he needed somewhere to stay in 2006 and 2014. Yeah, he lived with you. Not because he, he fed you lies. Okay, I'm going to go back even more. Daryl saying to her that he's a private person, only shares stuff stuff with with people that are family or not. That's a ploy to tell you, Michelle, that that he's only telling you what he's been telling you because he's a private person. That's it. That to me tells me that she probably asked for more information. Is her name Michelle? Am I seeing this right? Yeah, Michelle. That tells me that whatever conversation michelle and daryl were having michelle probably asked more questions like me and you would and he probably didn't answer because you know michelle i'm so private i don't want to say anything okay i'm a private person i always speak to yeah yeah 100 percent, 100 percent. where'd you come from daryl oh okay um do you have family do you have kids oh okay yes 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 who says that was a private person that only shares stuff with the family or not unless daryl said so himself do you know do you what I'm saying? This is this is stuff that people don't just say random. And the reason why Daryl was super emotional when that girl came on, two things. He likes her. Not sexual way. He likes her as a person. For some whatever reason, Daryl was able to feel safe around her. Her. Okay? He was able to feel safe. Therefore, he didn't need or feel the, the need to create stories. Daryl was able to relax around her that is viable for a narcissist okay she is a safe place for daryl that doesn't mean she's safe it just means that she is a safe place for him this is where he might go to recuperate and rejuvenate because it's exhausting to create stories do you understand that's one the second is that he was maybe 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 grooming her for whatever reason it may be. She maybe had a bigger purpose. 
She maybe had a bigger purpose that was cut short because of the because ex- because of the accident. Do you know? Do you understand? So he's feeling a level of remorse, like a level like, oh damn it, oh damn it. But I'm so happy to see you. So it's a combination of him liking her, him liking the safe place, and also him losing the opportunity that could have been had was he able to kind of just manipulate her a little longer. I wouldn't be surprised if it was a matter of time before Daryl made her, Michelle, a baby mama. He needs a place to stay. Michelle, you have no idea what you avoided. Ugh. Okay, are we done with this segment? It's exhausting. Are we done? Can we move on? Let's move on. Oh, thank God. You know, I, I apologize for taking so long. Uh, I want to start first. Um, by giving glory to to God. <laughs> I believe in Jesus Christ wholeheartedly. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe that He was sent here by the Father to die for all of our sins, everybody. Everybody in this courtroom today, everyone walking this planet, mostly for those of us who will believe. Right off the bat, his first statement is that he wants you to know that he's a changed man. It's not by random. He is spinning a story. First statement, I'm a changed man. I believe in God. I am different. I'm changed. I just want to clarify one thing. A lot of uh, references was made to one of the things I said regarding my conscience being clear. And having the time to think about it last night and to understand um, that the victims have the right to feel how they want to feel they have the right to their opinions and understanding that there's a lot of emotion pain frustration anger hatred a lot of a lot of emotions but I don't want that comment to be twisted I don't want that comment to become another narrative that's ran with and taken out of context that comment was made is because I made the decision to rededicate my life to Christ when this tragedy happened in no way did that comment referred to uh, not having any remorse, not having uh, any understanding. It was strictly made to that point that I have repented. In the same breath, he addresses the whole comment of consciousness clear. He is softening you up. No, that's not what I meant. That's not what I meant. What I meant to say is, is that my conscience is clear because I, I, I gave peace with God. I'm at peace with God. That's what I meant. Comment was made about this mask. It's something that I've worn the whole year of this incident. Um... I don't 
Well, I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna say don't, but I don't feel like um, I needed to go in too wild. Chose to wear this. Um, there are a lot of different reasons why. And COVID ain't one. But it definitely has nothing to do with hiding anything. Says the liar. There is nothing to hide. Oh, yes, you do. This was not an attack. Clearly, he's still mad about that chicken comment. This was not an intentional act. No matter how many times you say it over and over, it was not. I felt a lot of frustration and anger yesterday, not towards any of the victims. It was towards Miss Susan L. Opper. Boy, she don't care. And I won't even throw shots back at her. Again, I choose to take the high road. In spite of the clear language that was used by her, The difference between the all you all you guys is you attorney opera I don't respect how you did your job. Daryl, she doesn't care. And I never will. Daryl, Daryl, she doesn't care. Daryl. How you had the audacity to speak on situations that had nothing to do with this tragedy. As if you were there, as if you had intimate details, as if you knew everything that led up to those allegations. Mm. He's referring to Erica Patterson. Just by reading the police report. Kids, stay in school. I think every situation is unique in its own way. It all has different circumstances that that leads to ultimately what ends up happening. What? Reading the police report doesn't give you the right to pass judgment on a situation that frankly is none of your concern. Kids, stay in school. A police report can do all of that and more. Honestly, you would think for someone that's been doing your job as long as you have. <sighs> You would think you would understand that. Uh, I believe even in other countries. I, I've gotten some mail from Germany, Belgium. Uh, a lot of it hate mail, uh, which which doesn't. I stopped reading it months ago. Lies. Um, so it doesn't really affect me. It's irrelevant. Lies. Um, I do want to say something to. Uh, Everybody watching as, as far as um, those who take the time, spend the energy and money to, to write and spew hate, not just against um, myself, but my family, my children. No one is spewing hate towards your daughters. Are you out of your mind? Are you crazy, Daryl?
I have no value in anything that you say. It doesn't bother me. It doesn't affect me. Keep up the bad work. Okay. Stunat. This guy is a stunat. Look, this is where it gets interesting. I'm going to teach you how to recognize, identify, and notice story spinning. So, Daryl Brook had multiple stories during this trial. And let's start with the first one. The first one when he committed the crime, when he ran away, he told people that he was just going to see friends. I don't know, did I do something? What's going on? What's happening? What's happening? Hello? What did I do? Oh, okay. You didn't see me. No, it wasn't me. You didn't see me. That's not me. <laughs> right? That's the first story he's starting to spin. I wasn't there. It wasn't me. I was just hanging out with some friends to look at a basketball game or a football game. When that was shattered, he created another story. Oh, well, you know, it's Erica Patterson. You know, I went to see her and she was drinking. And, you know, like she knew I was not supposed to see her. But I went to see her. And because of her, now look where I am. It really, it's really her fault. When that didn't work, he created another story. Hmm, well, I'm a sovereign citizen. And you know what? You can't judge me. Oh, and by the way, the prosecution and all these detective are a conspiracy theory. Okay, so we went through three different type of stories. We are right now currently experiencing the fourth, fourth story. Fourth story. If I let me remind you, right? So the whole mental health poster child stuff that was all Don Wood saying. That was never there in Daryl's mouth, right? Think about it. Daryl Brooks starting to adapt that story after the verdict. Don Woods was talking about that story before the verdict. And we all know they communicated with one another many, 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 many times, right? Let me tell you what happened. I'm 100% sure that's what happened, but let's put allegedly because lots of surreal. All right, let me tell you what happened allegedly. Don Woods had her story in her mind. Like, that's not my son. He was mentally ill. He was sick. Spoiler alert. That was false. Okay? I'll get that in a bit. So, he gets the verdict of guilty. Mom! Mom! Can you believe it? They may be guilty. I don't understand. It's not your fault, baby. It's not your fault. It's because you're sick. Okay? It's, you're sick. They should have given you the medication you needed. It's all, like, if only they took care of you back then. Oh. Yeah, you're right, Mom. You're right. It's all their fault. If only they just gave me the medication I needed. Ta-da! Story is being spun in front of our eyes. I'm going to lay it all out to you exactly. But in order for me to do that, I need to be quiet. <laughs> right? Because it's easy to miss. I need to be quiet. I'm going to play this clip. You won't hear from me. I'm going to put writings and words to highlight what paragraph he's saying coalesce to what his intent is but you're also going to see that in a court of law that doesn't work because judges have to respect the law right so you can spin how many stories you want it's the court we need facts here and you're guilty sir so i don't know what your goal is do you understand so i'm going to be quiet Follow this damn foolery. And I'm going to highlight his trajectory. You're going to see how it's going to make sense. It's fascinating. It's, fasc it's fascinating. Mr. Brooks, what do you think this court should do? As far as the sentences are concerned with all of these convictions. Honestly, Your Honor, and I don't want I don't want this to be taken out of context. I 
I believe. There's issues with me attempting to answer that. And here's why. I'm still confused. I'm still confused on the true nature and cause of the charges. I don't understand them. I also I also believe the decision was already made before we even got here. And I could be wrong. That That's not a shot. It's not a slight in any way towards your honor. It, it's not. And I don't, I don't want that to be taken out of context as, as well. I, I will say... We'll say help is needed. <clears throat> when you've dealt with certain things as long as as I have. We have so many questions about where to start. Where to start. We have so many questions about what can give you the help you need. Who can point you in the direction to get the help you need. There, there's so many things that you, you, you just you don't know where to start at. Your Honor, I think that throughout these um, uh, proceedings, um, and I've noticed this, that, that you've been very observant. You've you've been um, very attentive. Um, regardless of me being uh, frustrated with some of the things that has has been, I, I can't do anything but. Um, Look at what what you have what you have done, which is um, you have you you have um, been very very keen. Um, I believe that um, still a lot of issues there <coughs> um, I believe that because of the issues I have sometimes you, I may have 
said things that you probably didn't really understand what I was meaning by it. Uh, I'm not uh, sharp as knife in the jewelry. Um, I think sometimes um, my, my, my mind probably works a little faster than I can articulate something or pronounce something or say something. Um, obviously it would be um, hard to top what was already said or said about you uh, thus far um, you, you've gotten an a, a incredible amount a, a, cre, a, cre, a credible amount of uh, of love um, for your job in this in this in this matter. Um, some even say superhero. Um, some people, I'm sure you know this, but uh, some people have even dressed up as you for Halloween. Brooks, I'm not looking for accolades from anyone. I'm looking here today to sentence you in this case, and I'm frankly more interested in your thoughts on that than your opinion of me and how I conducted myself during this trial. Uh, was it my opinion on that part? I, I just... I have a job to do today. It's not an easy one. There are 76 counts. I'd like you if you can, and if you want, to tell me how you think I should do that. That's what the victims have stated. That's what the state, right? They provided their recommendation. The only thing I can say <coughs> is one thing that should be taken into account is the time that I've served. Been here a year. Um, that would pretty much negate count 76. So there's that. Um, Your Honor, I'm, I'm confused. I don't I don't understand the true nature and cause of the charges. So I can't, I, I don't, I can't really consent to being sentenced when I'm still trying to, I don't have, I don't understand. It's not a delay tactic. It's not attempting to be disruptive. It's not intended to stop the proceedings. It's my honest opinion. I, I have trouble um, <clears throat> with comprehension. I, I can say uh, with one million percent certainty um, that everything um, as far as um, in regards to me everything should be looked at in, 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 in its um, totality the mental health issues I believe that you've seen you've seen them rear their head at times <coughs> I 
believe that. I, I know that you've seen that rear's head at times. I also believe that you recognize the need for, for, the, for the help that's needed. You've um, you've seen things as far back as uh, my childhood, and I believe that you understand the <coughs> certain needs that would benefit. <coughs> Where to start, me, myself, I don't know. There's so many issues that I've been trying to address for a long time. <coughs> a very long time. And I don't know where to start. No idea. Um, I can tell you that I want to be able to get to a point in my life where I can have um, the ability to recognize before. Um, before it happens when something could become out of control um, before um, <clears throat> an outside uh, source can maybe pinpoint it and say maybe something's wrong I, I will want to get to a point where I can be able to recognize the signs on my own um, I want to get to a point where I don't have a, a, a mind that's jumping back and forth and all over the place and these moves they go from here to here to here to here to here to here to here and then it's like oh I'm cool and then it's here to here to here to here I want to get to a place where I can combat that it's this your Honor, this this has not been easy, and, and not just this, but but life in general. It has not been easy. It's it's not easy to wake up every day and try to figure out how does how to stay grounded or how to. Stay in a stay in a um, um, I don't want to say a box, but to be able to to stay in in, in in a straight line to be able to take life as it comes to to um, not only be able to cope with things is. is Things are going to happen. Problems happen. Um, life itself isn't easy. I want to get to a point, Your Honor, where I can be able to say, okay, it's okay. It's okay. I can be myself. I can say, you know what? You aren't the only person going through this. This doesn't make you um, any less than anybody else. 
I wasn't asked to be born this way, Your Honor. I, I wasn't. I was not. I don't understand it. But the fact of the matter is, is, is I want to get to a point of happiness again. To be able to be uh, medicated and not care what people think. To be able to speak my truth without having to feel ashamed that some people may think of me lesser than a person because I have to be medicated for life or because um, they feel like it's not normal. Which lends to the reason why I said not wanting to live to please anyone else anymore. But for me to be okay. Here. Here. For me to be okay. Because I haven't been for a long time. I'm, I'm tired. I'm tired, Your Honor. I'm tired. Some days I don't know what, what's up or down. Some days I, I don't know. I want to know. Mr. Brooks, it's going on two hours. <clears throat> I feel like we're starting to cover the same ground over and over. So I'm going to ask you again, because I'm really interested in your perspective. I want to know as I consider and contemplate and finalize what to do in this case, if there are any sentencing recommendations you have on your own behalf to make at this time. I just want to be helped. I don't. I don't want to live with, with inside this pain anymore. I, I, I know that's probably not the answer you're looking for. Um, Your Honor, I. I really um, well, let me ask it this way sir six of these counts that you have been convicted of are intentional homicide charges the options for the court are very limited life without the possibility of extended supervision life with the possibility of extended supervision as early as 20 years, that's the statute, and third, anything in between. And then lastly, related to that, there's an enhancer of five years for each count based upon the jury answering that special verdict question, did you commit the offense of intentional homicide by using a dangerous weapon? Thoughts on that? Do you think you should spend the rest of your life in prison without ever seeing freedom outside bars? That would be extended supervision. Should these counts run consecutive or concurrent? Meaning one after the other or serving them at the same time? What are your thoughts on those things? I didn't understand everything you said, but I did. Um, I, I can't live a million years. I understand so, that. So. I 
I feel like um, I should be able to go somewhere where I can be helped, where I can be properly evaluated, where I can be properly medicated. <clears throat> if that is an extended period of a long, long time, at least I know that I'm getting what I need. Not, not what I want, what I need. At least then I would be able to say, It's okay. You can be you. You can be grateful for the fact that you have experts, or I, I don't know if that's the right word, but um, you, you have people that know exactly what to do that recognize exactly what needs to be done and what should be done to be able to um, like I said be properly uh, medicated which is Extremely needed. I, I don't know if that answers. I'll follow it up again. Do I? What I hear you saying, sir, is that you don't have a specific recommendation in terms of how long the sentences are, whether they're life, whether they're consecutive, whether they're concurrent. But you're asking me to take into consideration your mental health needs and your desire to get help. Would that be fair? Yes. All I right. would say um, and uh, I think it should be uh, what you said um, what, what was the term you used? Um, the extended supervision mm -hmm. term? Or consecutive versus concurrent? Yeah. The concurrent. Right. Serving sentences at the same time versus consecutive, one after the other. Um, serving all together. Um, my main thing is you know like I said re re regardless is to not just be put placed somewhere and just forgotten about that doesn't help Obviously, I don't know um, how that all works. Um, but um, I know that it would greatly benefit me to be able to be somewhere where like I said, I can properly um, evaluate it and medicate it with the things that I need. It, it could be something that I haven't even discovered yet, or not me myself, but it can be something that maybe way near that could have helped me years ago that I probably wouldn't never have known up until this point that could have 
immensely helped me. I, I, I want the yeah, I want the, the opportunity. And again, I think we're starting to right, repeat yeah. some of these topics that you've covered, and I understand what you're saying. I and I want to beat this. I want to beat this. I want I the opportunity that. to beat it, to show that it can be beat. At this I don't, time, I don't have to live like. You know, I, I want to show. I want to show that, regardless of of of, of anything, that there is still hope. I want to be able to show my children that, re regardless, you, you, you can be, you can, you can rise up. You don't have to. So I, you don't. I believe I, I understand and comprehend your desire to have your mental health issues addressed and met. You've stated that multiple times. I understand that. I can certainly address that in my sentencing remarks here today. At this time. Um, it's been over two hours. I appreciate all of the words you've said here today and the fact that you've, um, you know, made a statement. It, um, I apologize for the length. I didn't even it's not about realize. It's okay. I have absolutely no doubt that Mr. Brooks is competent. I'm obviously well-versed in the legal standard um, but that is not something that this court was frankly ever concerned about. The doctor goes on that it's her understanding that this characterological condition would not qualify as a mental disease or defect as defined by the applicable statute, which also specifies that mental disease or defect does not include an abnormality manifested only by repeated criminal or otherwise antisocial conduct. While acknowledging Mr. Brooks' documented history of episodic contacts with mental health professionals beginning in adolescence, most of the time he has had such contacts or received mental health treatment when in custody. In effect, there is not a sustained, documented history of a diagnosed major mental illness for him predating the alleged offense or otherwise. Looked at a psychiatric review from April of 2010. Uh, at that point, the defendant was determined to have no medically determinable impairment on which to qualify for disability benefits. The consultant who conducted the review noted that Mr. Brooks claimed mental illness was not, quote, well established, quote, that the statements that he made at that point were not deemed credible, they were inconsistent and not verified by treatment providers in the community. Factor number two, the defendant's history of violence be beginning years predating the alleged offense is significant. He faced multiple prior domestic related charges. He was not permitted in his mother's home because of the history of violence. To be sure, the magnitude and lethality of Mr. Brooks's violence in the commission of the alleged offenses is more severe than what was previously known. However, the defendant's history of a pattern of violent behavior coupled with other aspects of his history and in this case, and this case strongly suggests that his mental state, which produced the alleged offenses, was most fundamentally formed and fueled by contributions of his underlying characterological dysfunction, anger and rage born of his conflict with his girlfriend moments before the Christmas parade tragedy. To the contrary, the defendant's conduct within hours of the onset and moments following the alleged misconduct was organized, controlled, and purposeful. Moreover, he demonstrated the motivation and capacity to take efforts to evade detection and try to flee the immediate area of the parade carnage. She went on, I have considered the seemingly inexplicable nature and magnitude of the violence and mayhem wrought by the defendant's conduct on the day in question. He has caused six death, deaths, dozens of injuries, and terrorized hundreds of parade participants and thousands of spectators. There is no indication in the extensive compilation of records and other information available that at the time of the alleged misconduct, he lacked substantial capacity 
to either control or conform his conduct to the requirements of the law or that his reality contact capacity to appreciate wrongfulness was substantially impaired. In the context of rage born of his conflict and altercation with his former girlfriend turmoil, the defendant was disinclined to control his behavior or attend to its consequences. Notwithstanding the magnitude of the violence in this case, a mental disease or defect is not defined by the unnaturalness or enormity of the act. Moreover, temporary passion or frenzy prompted by revenge, hatred, jealousy, envy, or the like does not constitute a mental disease or defect. The content of his initial statements to authorities included multiple efforts to deceive or mislead. He changed his story multiple times, including he initially denied being in Waukesha the prior Saturday. He initially asserted he traveled to Waukesha on the day in question in a tan Kia with a friend. He initially asserted his mother did not own a vehicle, though later acknowledged as much, and that he used it from time to time. Other changes in his story over the course of his statements and the nature of them further suggest that he was making active attempts to evade detection or responsibility. By implication, such behavior strongly suggests that his reality contact was then intact. It was not until Mr. Brooks was in the booking area of the Waukesha County Jail that he displayed some emotion, and this was to, I believe, Detective Stern, where he, was, where he said, I didn't mean to kill nobody. Such a remark indicates an awareness of the consequences of his actions and runs counter to a conclusion of an exculpatory mental disease or defect. It's ultimately that will happen when you are in prison, sir, is that the Department of Corrections, they are statutorily responsible for your care and your well-being, including your mental health. I do not have any authority to dictate to them where you go or how they treat you. That is far different than when there is support for a plea of not guilty by reason of mental disease or defect because then the court has available what is called um, treatment facilities um, and a commitment to such uh, a treatment facility. That is something that is simply not on the table. Do you hear this? I'm going to summarize this for you, just in case, just in case, just in case, just in case you're one of those rare people who supports this stunad of, of a mother called Dawn Woods. She's such a tomato and her son is a salad and the grandma is the croutons. Listen, listen, okay? The judge just told us all the truth. Dara Brooks was never sick. Dara Brooks not only was never sick, never sick, never diagnosed. He was never brought to a hospital, to a doctor when he was young. His mother never did that. Matter of fact, he was so violent, so violent that the only mental treatment he received was while he was in custody. Don was, you're the one sitting here with your stupid wig telling us about how, how, um, the system and the tax dollars and the senators and the governors and the lawmakers don't care about your kid and how the society wants to trash them and throw them away. Don was society has been treating your son while he was in custody. My tax dollars has been treating your son while he was in custody. What were you doing, Don Woods? What were you doing? What were you doing, Don Woods? What were you doing? What were you doing? Do you know how much I'm paying taxes? What were you doing, Don Woods? What were you doing? Do you understand what I'm saying? She went on a rant and a tirade, not only on day one, on day two, on the press tour. I mean, I, I couldn't, she wouldn't shut up about how no, nobody's doing enough for her. Only to find out. She, she's done nothing and it's been us who's been doing all the work. This is worse than being lied to. Actually, it's worse than being cheated on. It's like Bernie Madoff. <laughs> That's extreme. No, it's not. That's a con. I've been con. Oh, look at that. Look at that. The mother of Dara Brooks conned us. Shocker. Shocker. And then the other thing the judge has told us, very simple, is that, look, Daryl, look, Daryl, stop annoying me with this stupid asylum stuff. I'm going to tell you 
I'm going to tell you something. I don't have that power. If you want to go to a mental asylum, you should have kept your insanity plea. I don't have that power. The justice pretty much told him, like, bye, Daryl. Bye. Good luck. Bye. And you know, you know what Daryl was thinking. He was like, oh, my God, I went through all this work. I called my mother. I called my grandma. They went to on the governor website. They wrote all this letter. I talked to Michelle. I cried. I did all this speech for nothing. Yep. At the time of all of this, right, you were out on bond for two felony cases, one involving a handgun, one involving the same vehicle and Erica Patterson, and one involving ultimately intimidation of Ms. Patterson. We know that you, that on November 20th, and she was very contrite about this. She told you where she was, she, she invited you out there and that you had contact with her on the 20th. There was some physical. Mr. Brooks, this is my time. You need to not interrupt. That's the reason why the, the, the charge was dropped. Mr. Brooks, the state you need to stop. said specifically, wrote you, Your Honor, and said that they know it was no incident that day. Mr. And Brooks, now you want to sit up here. Do not interrupt me you, or you will be removed to and, the other And now you room. want to sit up here. Stop. And try to now. And try to add something in that you know for a fact never even happened. You want to sit up Mr. here and Brooks, talk about every who time has grace and all this. You talking about someone with five kids that don't have custody. You need to stop None right now or you will be removed. Remove me then. All right. He will be removed. He cannot simply stay quiet. I don't consent when this to being court talks. anyway. I don't consent to this. Just like I told you. I don't know the uh, He'll be in recess until I don't, he's I don't even the understand the, the true nature and cause. Mr. Brooks was in custody and there are jail phone calls where he's berating Erica Patterson, encouraging her to recant, blaming her for what had happened, saying things on that phone call like, you trying to make it seem like everything is always everyone else's fault but yours. Like you don't never do anything to cause shit. And the whole cause of this is something that you did. He ended the call by telling Erica Patterson, you did this shit and you couldn't even keep your mouth shut after numerous people told you that shit. This ain't the place for you to be doing this shit and you still ran your mouth. And I'm the one sitting in here facing all this time. Repeatedly calls her a b During a phone call on November 11th, Daryl Brooks is overheard or captured saying, why in the hell would I just try to mow her down knowing I could kill her like that? Like, okay, I probably got a few screws loose, but I ain't hardly no goddamn fool. He's complaining that she won't help post his bail. You didn't put a cent on my bail. Why should someone else have to pay for some sh you caused? The end, apparently, of that conversation, or at least moments later, he says to her, nah, I didn't try to do anything because if I tried to do something, you wouldn't be on the phone now. That's what you're not realizing. If I really tried to do something, you wouldn't be on the phone now. That is the rage and the anger that Mr. Brooks had on November 21 of 2021 when he tracked down Erica Patterson, confronted her. This wasn't about him getting money from her, like he lied to Detective Carpenter about. This was to confront her. He clearly hit her, we know that. This is the type of man that drove through the Christmas parade enraged because frankly, it's entirely possible that Corey Runkle and Nicholas Kirby 
save the life of Erica Patterson. It, it's clear Mr. Brooks was hell bent to cause harm to her, but she was able to get free, run back to her friends. Who knows what would have happened but for their intervention. Let me tell you something. Erica Patterson escaped. I mean, I know Erica Patterson said she wasn't being pimped, but I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. I believe Daryl on this one. I believe he pimped her. He said it out of his mouth. Why would he lie? Why would he lie? It's not something positive. And you know Daryl wants nothing but positive stuff on his on him. Why would he lie about that? I guarantee you Don Woods allegedly uh, took some of that money. Allegedly. Because in what world would your son attempt a murder, you bail him out knowing he attempted the murder, and then you complain that the person he tried to murder didn't pay into, didn't give you money for the bailout. Look, I know officially that that wasn't said, but can we talk unofficially? You, do you really think that mother and son did not converse when she went and bailed him out? You're damn right she did. Hey, I put $1,000 for your bail, okay? And now I got no money for my hair. Well, mom, it's not my fault, okay? It's Erica Patterson. She called the cops. I mean, I tried to run her over, but I was just trying to, like, hit her toenail. Oh, that damn bee. At least you should have put some money into your bail. I know, mom. It's okay. I'll get your car. i get her tomorrow. Gross. And look at the conversation on the phone. Erica Patterson, run. Run, 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 run. Because the, the, the fact that the mother is still alive, she blames you every freaking day. Run, live in secret. Don't boast about your happiness. Take your daughter. Heal. Daryl will use his mother to find out where you live, and he'll he'll get you. Allegedly, he'll get he'll get you. A guy like that, he'll get you. Unless they throw the key in a dungeon, he'll get you. Oh, a mess. On counts one through six, this court is imposing a life sentence without the possibility or eligibility for extended supervision consecutive to one another. One life sentence for Virginia Sorensen. One life sentence for Leanna Owen. One life sentence for Tamara Durand. One life sentence for Jane Kulik. One life sentence for Bill Hospel. And one life sentence for Jackson Sparks. I've considered the enhancer and the additional five years that I could impose but I don't need to really order that because I've not made him eligible for extended supervision and it would only be to increase his time on initial confinement. But make no mistake, Mr. Brooks, you use that vehicle as a battering ram, no different than frankly a firearm. At the end of the day, Erica Patterson survived by the skin of her teeth. Okay, skin of her teeth. He was going, like he was determined to end her that day, end her. And I can guarantee it, he spoke to his mom about it. She knows, she knows. Uh, look, for my final thought, this was a lot. If you pick the whole trial together, you put it into a little ball, it's a, it's a poopy ball, okay? It's a lot. I am, I, I am quite happy that this is somewhat the end. Finally, finally, right? Don't you feel like, oh, oh, oh. By the way, this video was very long. I understand. I try my best to entertain you along the way to keep you awake. Hi, hey, hi, hi. I did my best. So I hope you were not falling asleep and paying attention. I did my best to keep you alert. So um thank you uh then let's see 
there's not much of a final thought. This was very thorough, um, interesting trial. Look, look, uh, this story was amazing. Look, I have to look at Daddy Bailiff one more time. Hi, sir. Look, this story was so amazing, and you were great. You protected us. You protected the judgment of good hair. Her hair was good, right? You protected her. You gave us entertainment, and, you know, you're so stoic and vanguard-ish. Listen to me, sir. I have to retire you, okay? Because we have to move on to a new story. I think we're done with Daryl Brooks. Are we done with Daryl Brooks? We're done with Daryl Brooks. Can we move on to another story? So, um, I have to retire Daddy Bailiff. I'm going to I'm gonna move him over here. I'm, I, he's going to change. He's going he's gonna to be different. He's going to change. He's going to go f to another wall in another fashion, okay? Daddy Bailiff has to be retired because we're done with Daryl Brooks. Daryl, Daryl, bye, Daryl. I'm done, right? Done. Done with Daryl Brooks, but Daddy Bailiff will stay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Look, stay tuned, all right? We're going to talk about another criminal. They're everywhere. Crazier than ever. You know, it makes me wonder. Like, sometimes I'm like, hmm, you know, during, you know, during our younger days when we, go, we used to go to the club and dance and party, and you know we've all done that, the one night stands. Who the hell? How do we go home with? Sometimes it's like, holy crap, I could have been Jeffrey Darmard. No, think about that. Think about that a little bit. Sometimes I'm like, what the hell was I thinking back in the day? Right? Meet a stranger, go to their place, take a full on nap, snoring and all. <laughs> Wake up at 1 p.m. the next day. Oh, I'm, al I'm alive. Like, what? What were we doing? There are some criminals out there, but that's why we're here. For. We're going to talk about them. By the way, I got all your names for the group, for the name of the of the community. I'm going to I'm going to put put them all into a poll sometimes tomorrow on on uh, Tuesday. And then uh you guys are all going to vote of which one. Uh very interesting names. I really loved it. Um and look, look, if you don't agree with me, don't be mad at me, okay? We're friends. Look, part of being friends is not be agreeing all the time. Can you imagine if you agreed all the time with your friend? How boring is that? No. Friends don't fight like that. But friends argue-ish, okay? Like, you can't say yes to everything. Look, I'm French. If you, if you, if you, if you hang out with French people, the first thing out of their mouth is no. Are you okay? No. Do you want to go? No. What's your name? No. That's the first thing we say is no. And then we think about it and say, oh yeah, maybe. We don't even say yes. Yes is not even in the vocabulary, okay? So, I know Americans get very offended with the whole like, oh, you said no? <laughs> I'm the wrong one because I say no a lot. <laughs> I say no 90% of the time. <laughs> listen, 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 listen. Don't be offended, all right? We're friends, but we're allowed to have our own little opinions, okay? And I say no a lot. That's it. That's it. Wasn't this a great saga? What a great journey. Hey, listen. I see you next week with the next criminal. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. I'm trying to make it funny. And entertaining as best I can, okay? Like, I don't want to talk too much. I took too much of your time. Look what time it is. Look how much time I took from you. Thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, and I'll see you next week. Bye, Daryl. Bye, Daryl. Bye, the bailiff. Ooh, the judge with the good hair. Her hair was good, wasn't it? Mm-mm-mm.